All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, good evening and welcome to the March 30th, 2023 meeting of the Minnetonka Planning Commission. The commission generally meets on the first and third Thursdays of the month. The schedule and tentative agendas can be obtained by calling the planning department or by checking the city website at minnetonkamn.gov. The commission holds public hearings on land use applications. From a sp specific process standpoint, that means we make recommendations to the city council on rezonings, subdivisional, some divisions, <clears throat> conditional use permits, and amendments to the city's comprehensive plan, zoning ordinance, and subdivision regulations. We also make final decisions on site plans, signage requests, and variance requests, and expansion permits, unless these requests are part of an application that must be heard by the city council. In that case, the commission makes a recommendation and the council makes the final decision. The city notifies property owners within at least 400 feet of the sites, posts signs on the properties, and places notices in the Lakeshore Weekly News and the Midtonka Memo. Any aggrieved party may appeal a final planning commission decision to the city council. If you wish to appeal, you must submit a written request to the city within 10 days of this meeting. From a broader standpoint, the city's comprehensive plan, zoning ordinance, and subdivision regulations are the city's best efforts to codify a balance between individual rights and community responsibilities. Individual rights are easy to understand. Community responsibilities are more subtle, but the idea is that we, as members of the community, agree to limit our individual rights for the common good of the group. The planning department, the planning commission, and the city council are charged with managing this sometimes difficult balancing act. We ask you to keep this broader perspective in mind as we review tonight's applications. Again, welcome. Staff, please call roll. Banks. Here. Hansen. Here. Henry. Here. Maxwell. Here. Powers. Here. Waterman. Here. Chair Sewell. Here. There are seven of us. We are at full strength tonight. Um, all right. Next uh, on the agenda is approval of the agenda, and I believe there is a change memo. Yes, Chair, Commissioners, um, this is for item 7B, it's the Minnetonka Corporate Center sign plan, <clears throat> and there was an um, error in the proposed um, sign uh, area for sign number 8 and sign number 10, so instead of 34, it's 35 square feet for either of those. That's all. Thank all you. All right. Great. Thanks for the correction. Uh, recognizing the change memo, would anyone like to make a motion to approve tonight's agenda? I'll make the motion. Motion, Henry. I'll second. Second, Maxwell. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next is approval of minutes from the March 16th, 2023 meeting. Uh, commissioners, any changes to those meeting or minutes? <clears throat> Doesn't look like it. Then I'll take a motion to approve the minutes from that meeting. I'll make the motion. Motion, Banks. I'll second. Second, Waterman. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next is item number five, report from staff. Uh, Chair and Commissioners, real uh, short report again for the second meeting in a row. We don't have any any updates from the Council. Um, uh, we haven't had any meetings between our Planning Commission and that March 6 Council meeting, so nothing to report on that front. Um, so with three meetings in March that we've had, we're going to move into April uh, with one meeting, and that'll be... Um, I'm going to predict after we've had a 50-degree temperature day, and... Uh, certainly less snow on the ground that uh, April 20th will be our next meeting so I'll leave you with that thank you all right I hope you're right uh, next is report from Planning Commission anything to report commissioners doesn't look like it all right we'll keep moving along <clears throat> uh, next on the agenda is item number seven which is part of the consent agenda these are items that are typically more routine in nature and we will pass with one motion um, if anyone would like to pull an item and have a full discussion and a vote on it, uh, you can let us know. Commissioners, uh, anyone like to pull any items tonight? Just for the record, <clears throat> we've got a few here. Uh, so 7A is a variance for a garage edition at uh, 14920 Belvoir Drive. Uh, next is amendments to the Minnetonka Corporate, sign, corporate Center sign plan as it pertains to the property at 12501, 12701 Whitewater Drive. Uh, item 7C is our items conserving uh, Ovation Orthodontics at 10999 Red Circle Drive. And item 7D, conditional use permit and variance for Hoover Perio at uh, 10000 Minnetonka Boulevard. Uh, commissioners, anyone like to pull any of these items? Doesn't look like it. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to pull an item to have a full discussion? 
Doesn't look like it. All right, sounds like we're probably ready for a motion. Uh, Commissioner, does anyone like to make a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Uh, motion Waterman, second power. Staff, please poll the commission. Banks? Yes. Henry? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Maxwell? Yes. Powers? Yes. Waterman? Yes. Chair Sewell? Yes, motion carries. And these are all either approvals or to be heard by the City Council on the 17th of April. I think that captures everything. So, uh, all right, those, uh, good luck with your uh, projects and proposals. Um, all right, moving on, and before we move on to the non-consent agenda, I'm, I'd like to review the steps in the process and the public hearing procedure that will be followed for each proposal. First item will be announced and the staff will report on the subject. The commission will then ask questions. Next, the applicant will be invited to make a presentation or offer comments. Commissioners may ask additional questions at this time. After the applicant is finished, the public hearing will be open to give anyone present the opportunity to comment on the proposal. If you wish to speak, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. We ask you to keep your comments brief and try not to repeat, point, repeat points already made. Once everyone has spoken, we may allow speakers to return for additional comments at larger meetings. The public hearing will then be closed and no further comments will be allowed. The commission will discuss the proposal and make a decision. Uh, the first item on tonight's uh, <clears throat> non-consent agenda is uh, item 8A, expansion permit for an addition at 14755 Witchy Wood Drive. Uh, and Ms. Raines, I think this is your item. Thank you, Chair Sewell. Commissioners. Sorry, let me move this closer. The item before you is for an expansion permit at 14755 Witchy Wood Road. Property is generally west of Williston and north of Highland Place. The property was built uh, prior to today's zoning ordinance, so there is a nonconformity. Uh, the property has a nonconforming setback. Let me zoom in. So the 40 foot rear yard setback is required for the property. Uh, as you can see, the structure is currently at 18. And I also did circle the setback of the other corner, the rear corner of the house. The lines depict the floodplain and the floodplain setback. The blue is the floodplain. And then the yellow is the 10 foot setback, which is the required setback for accessory structures, such as the deck. And then the pink is the setback of 20 feet, which is required for, access or for principal structures. So as you can see, the house is either in the floodplain or in the floodplain setback. The applicant is requesting an expansion permit to vertically expand on the existing non-conforming setback, which again would be that rear yard setback. Staff is generally um, agrees with the proposal and is in favor of the proposal because it will not be increasing the non-conformity or exaggerating any existing uh, flood potential. It'll just be building again vertically. Also, the floodplain ordinance um, for the lowest floor elevation uh, is, does not, is not triggered excuse me, by the addition of a second level. Since that's obviously above the existing floor print or uh, footprint, that would not be a concern for this property. And then for the property, another aspect of the floodplain ordinance is that any work structural alteration done to the building, as it is a nonconformity in the floodplain ordinance or floodplain zone, it does have a limitation of 50% of the structural value for those structural alterations. So that is a condition of the resolution that no more than 76,000 may be used for structural alterations for this property. With an expansion permit, we do look at certain things such as reasonability, uh, uniqueness of the property, and if the character of the neighborhood will be changed. For this property, uh, we do not see that, or we see that it is a reasonable request. Uh, there is a uniqueness, again, that most of the property is in the floodplain or the floodplain setback, and this does not seem to be something that would alter the neighborhood character. 
Again, the staff is proposing to approve this project. And with that, I return it to you, Chair Sewell. Great, thank you. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Yeah, Commissioner Henry. Thanks, Chair. Uh, first question is, looks like the driveway is completely in the floodplain. Is that, does the city have any concerns about that? I know it's a pre-existing condition and maybe it's a question for the homeowner, but I haven't seen this before where the driveway is completely in the floodplain. Uh, Chair Sewell, Commissioner Henry, since nothing is being changed for the driveway, that's not something that we look at. So as you mentioned, it would be something more of a preference for the property owner. Okay, thanks. Other questions? Yeah, Commissioner Banks. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> uh, two quick questions. One, um, so with the <coughs> alterations not exceeding the seventy-six thousand, um, how do how do we monitor that? Is that how do we ensure that that doesn't go over to seventy-six thousand? Chair Sewell, Commissioner Banks. So part of one of the con conditions for this resolution is that we'd want a breakdown uh, for the evaluation which is provided at the time of the building permit. With that we'd want to see uh, the elements for the structural alterations which is footing, uh, shell, roof, framing, and the cost of labor for that. Okay. And my second question, um, <clears throat> with the additional weight on top of the existing home with the, from the addition, um, any concerns with the foundation being able to support that and if there is any engineering required for the foundation, would that impact uh, the floodplain at all? Chair Sewell, Commissioner Banks, uh, part of the building permit process would be a required um, sign off from an engineering firm, uh, some structural plans. And then would that be included in the 76,000? The engineering firm? Mm -hmm. No, this would just be strictly for the structural alteration, okay. so like the physical work. Okay. All right, thank you. Other questions? I have a, a couple questions. First, we'll start very high level. Is the spirit behind the 50%, um, I don't know if it's rule of law ordinance, um, <clears throat> is that to essentially protect people financially from themselves if someone will start to do something silly and, and uh, improve a a structure that's in the floodplain a lot and then it ends up flooding and then they lose everything is that essentially the spirit behind that chair so i'd say yes and that the purpose is that the house would or a property would generally need to come closer to compliance so once you get to that 50 percent then your next option is to leave the house as is or you would be to today's new standards or standards for a new structure okay got it thank you um <clears throat> and then uh, my next question is a little more technical here is that triggered only when in the floodplain? So I'm gonna use some Sesame Street terms here. Because it's touching the blue, is that triggered? Or because it's touching the yellow? Or because it's touching the pink? Right. Chair Sewell, it's because it is, the property is either in the floodplain or has a floodplain on it, or is adjacent to. So um, for example, the neighbor to the west, if the floodplain did not go into their yard, they would still be adjacent to and they'd be subject to the really? at least the lowest floor yeah okay so it's the, it's proximity to a floodplain that that's necessarily being built in a floodplain or on a floodplain okay correct great thank you because i know this may come up at some point in the future and this is kind of a, a new one for for me personally so thank you for the education yeah, yeah, yeah. just and maybe just one comment to add on to bria's comments the 50 percent um value is actually it from the state floodplain uh, ordinance model so all communities across the state sure. have the same language for this non-conforming language okay great thanks for the context yeah Commissioner Henry you have a question mm -hmm. with the with that valuation for 76,000 if, if I'm hearing you right it sounds like you mean the cost to rebuild the house as the city estimates it is 152,000 so then you can't go over half of that to do renovations or is am I missing something Chair Sewell, uh, Commissioner Henry, I'll defer that to one of my colleagues. Um, that number, the 152 that you uh, mentioned, uh, Chair Sewell and uh, commissioners, is the appraised value of the property. So a, a appraiser went out, said, what is the value of, of the home? 
um, that appraisal was looked at by our city assessors and they agreed they said yep that looks like a, a good value for that home and so that's where that number came from that's the value of the of the the wood and the materials of the home and not the property existing structure correct not the, the property itself mm -hmm. okay thank you and i think not also the replacement value right because that, that would be a totally different much larger number correct it's it's the the value of the structure as it exists today okay great thank you any other questions for staff doesn't look like it thank you um <clears throat> if is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak about this item if anything you want to add or uh, if can you uh man stepping up to the podium and giving us uh, your name and address for the record my name is christopher johnson I re currently reside, I own 14755 Witchwood Road, but I reside at 2200 Winfield Avenue in Golden yep. Valley. And I, uh, Derek Banks, his question about the foundation, the engineer's report already uh, agrees that the existing structural foundation is strong enough to carry the additional support of a additional level. I was Great. just wanting to, he no, had that you. question. Yep, no. <laughs> thought I'd just throw it out there. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, we will open the public hearing. If anyone in the audience would like to come speak about this item. Doesn't look like it. I'm guessing there's nobody uh, on the line tonight. Is that true, Mr. Gordon? Okay, we'll close the public hearing then. Uh, commissioners, any final questions? Otherwise, uh, thoughts? Oh, yeah, Commissioner Henry. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chair. I do have a couple of questions for the homeowner. So if you'd like to come back up, Christopher. I'd appreciate it. Maybe just for my own curiosity, but since the the driveway is completely within the floodplain, have you had instances where the driveway has been completely flooded over or not so much? I've only owned the property for six months. I bought it in June. Uh, the uh, prior owner has, uh, we had discussions about it. Once I found out it was in the floodplain, I talked to her and she said in the 60 years, because her they were the sole original owner of the house. They lived there the entire time. They've never had any flood. Okay. In okay. sixty since sixty one. So yeah, that's about sixty some odd years. Mm. And since June, we haven't had any rain. So yeah, I'm we haven't had any. Flood. But we had a lot of snow. Yep, that's but true. It, 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 I don't think of it as a. I didn't think of it as. I don't. I'm not concerned. Okay. Uh, speaking of concern, I know the the price of materials and labor is increasing these days, and the renovations that you plan are extensive, and I think it's great for the neighborhood. Do you have any concerns about getting underneath that $76,000 mark? I think with the $76,000 mark is for the structural component of the shell. Mm -hmm. So that does not include the wind. I'm fine. I'm, I own a construction company, so I'm very versed and very up to date on con, uh, trust prices, sheeting prices, and actually, in the last two years, the prices have gone down. So two years ago when the pandemic started up, all of our prices of our materials went up almost 200 plus percent. Mm -hmm. And now they've, they haven't gone down to pre-pandemic prices, but I'm very confident that I can meet the uh, required guidelines. Good, sounds like a fine time to do renovations. Thank you. Every day is a fine time. <laughs> Thank you. All right, any other questions, commissioners, or anyone like to, to comment on this? That's so why we're here. Commissioner Waterman, kick us off. Please. Thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, I'm in support of this uh, for pretty much the reasons outlined in the staff analysis. It seems quite reasonable. Um, obviously, the flood plain and setback gives some pause, but in that we're just going vertically, and it doesn't seem like we're going to be adding any more impervious surface, no... Uh, kind of adverse impact to the neighborhood or other neighborhood feedback. This seems uh, it's interesting to talk about and kind of bring it forth rather than put on the the consent agenda. But uh, like I said, I'm 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 in support of this. Great, thanks. Other comments? Yeah, Commissioner Henry. <clears throat> thanks. I'm glad that it's not on the consent agenda because there are some concerns here about the floodplain. So it's nice to hash this out. And as always, the city staff is very knowledgeable. Thank you, Christopher, for coming up and illuminating us on what your plans were. I think it's great. The, the home is dated. And if the renovations go through as planned, I think it's a great addition to the neighborhood. It's going to be a very attractive home. 
and it's going to be good for the city and its occupants. So I'm also in complete support. Great, thanks. Other commissioners? Any comments or anything? Dad? Yeah, Commissioner Powers. Uh, you know, I drove over to the property today, and it's just a wonderful place to have a house. It's just wonderful. So congratulations on owning it. Um, and I agree with other commissioners that it, since it is in compliance with everything that the staff has analyzed, I'm perfectly good with voting in favor of it. So, and when I'm not a planning commissioner any longer, I'd like to be invited over to a party. <laughs> Oh, do you remember him? Did you catch him? I do. I do it very well. Yes, I used to watch him when I was a kid. <laughs> Fun trip down memory lane. Well, and if you want to come sit on my knee, I'll tell you stories <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Moving along, any uh, yeah, Commissioner Banks? Um, I'm also in favor of it um, as well as the other commissioners. We did a similar project where we built on top of our garage. Um, we're not in the floodplain, so you know this. The evaluation and <clears throat> uh, the fifty percent. This is all new to me, so really want to get more inf insight and information about how this works. Um, but just the idea of taking the existing home and and adding to it, not necessarily having to go out but go up. I think it's a really smart idea, um, and uh, yeah, I wish you the, much success with with the home. Thank you so much. Great. I'll take that as a compliment, so <laughs> we'll keep, mo keep moving along. Any other comments, commissioners? All right, I think we're probably, uh, I think we are all in support of this. So uh, I think we're ready for a motion. It'd be a motion to uh, approve the recommendation to the city council, adopt the resolution, approving the expansion permit of an addition at 14755, which you would road. Would anyone like to make that motion? I'll make the motion that we approve. All right, uh, motion banks. I'll second. Second, Henry, staff, please pull the commission. Banks? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Henry? Yes. Maxwell? Yes. Powers? Yes. Waterman? Yes. Chair Sewell? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, good luck with your project. All right. Moving on to item 8B. Uh, I, you two. Items concerning Mega Pickle and Pong at 17585 Highway 7. Uh, and Ms. Scully, you get uh, the honor of this one. Thank you, Chair. The second item on tonight's non-consent agenda is located at the intersection of County Road 101 and Highway 7. Previously, the Big Thrill Factory occupied the southernmost tenant space uh, in the, I'm using the wrong mouse, let me grab the right one. <clears throat> the southernmost space uh, in this multi-tenant shopping center. The use included a number of year-round activities interior to the space and several outdoor seasonal activities on the south side of the building. The use received several subsequent approvals to reconfigure that outdoor area and expand the hours outside of the standard city noise ordinance. And that continued until the Big Thrill Factory closed in the year of 2020. <clears throat> All the land use approvals associated with that use have since expired and the space has remained vacant. Mega Pickle and Pong currently operates a location in Chanhassen and is proposing to open a second location in the former Big Thrill space. The interior would be remodeled to accommodate 10 pickleball courts, a kitchen, a concession stand, and indoor seating areas. Uh, that outdoor area to the south of the building would be reconfigured to accommodate a fire pit, lawn games, pickleball courts, and seating areas. Minor changes to the exterior facade <clears throat> are proposed to essentially blend in the building with the existing mall and then remove the gears that were associated with the former tenant from the front of that space. Staff has reviewed the proposal and finds that the new restaurant and concession stand would have seating for 60 people and would meet the general and specific standards outlined for restaurant uses by code. And since the restaurant is uh, located in a space that had previously had a much larger restaurant, uh, it is not intended 
or anticipated that it would increase the parking demand of the site. But for the setback variance, the outdoor seating area would meet the general and specific standards for such a use. Uh, the outdoor seating area would encroach only five feet into that setback uh, from a residential property line, and staff finds that request is also reasonable. <clears throat> As beyond that, there's an additional 250 foot separation, uh, vegetation, topography, Purgatory Creek, and a public trail uh, separating it between uh, the outdoor area and the nearest residential structure. And finally, uh, staff finds that the interim use permit request and site plans for that outdoor area are reasonable as it's located more than 100 feet from that residential property line. It's located such that it would not interfere with site circulation. It's located in an area that was previously used for outdoor entertainment. And finally, uh, it's required to conform with the provisions outlined in the noise and, or excuse me, in the nuisance ordinance related to exterior lighting and noise. So with that chair, I'm gonna turn it back to you with a recommendation for approval. Great, thank you. Uh, commissioners, do we have any questions for Steph? Yeah, Commissioner Hanson. Thanks chair, thanks Ms. Colley. Um, I probably have a series of questions that I think are pretty easy in the grand scheme of things. So um, in terms of parking, I don't, I don't think that Mega Pickle and Pong is necessarily, uh, I'll say, in charge of parking, but I'm sure that's a component of their application tonight. Um, the flow of the parking lot, who, who ultimately bears the responsibility for the flow of the parking? Uh, Chair and Commissioner Hansen, uh, the property owner, uh, they did, the property owner did uh, apply to restripe the lot. I believe it was two years ago, and I think that work was completed. Okay. Thanks. That'll probably lend some comments for me later, but I'm good. Great. Thanks. Other questions? Yeah. We've had some conversations before and city staff has raised some concerns about the use of EFIS on the outside structure. I see that there's some plans to use EFIS here too. On review of the, the proposal, has city staff raised any concerns about that? Uh, Chair Sewell and Commissioner Henry, uh, the amount of EFIS on the building would actually be reduced uh, than what's there today, but staff has included a condition of approval for the applicant to provide a material board that's subject to staff approval at the time of a building permit. Thanks, I'm glad to hear that. I would have liked to have seen some colored renderings of the, of the outside on here. Absent of that, I'm glad that city staff is making that a condition. Other questions? Oh yeah, Commissioner Waterman. Uh, just one I noticed in there, it's part of the IUP standards that um, the project couldn't delay or impact the redevelopment of a site. Is, is there any planned redevelopment of this site? Uh, Chair Sewell and Commissioner Waterman, uh, the city has not uh, received any applications for redevelopment, nor uh, has the property owner indicated that. Great, thanks. Any other questions? Um, one question that I have is, I apologize if I missed it in the packet. Um, do you know what the hours would be if on the exterior sp space? Would that be the same as the uh, big thrill, which I think was 11 p.m.? They had the... Uh, Chair Sewell, uh, remember. the conditions of approval would limit it to the noise ordinance, so that would be okay. the standard city ordinance. Okay. Uh, but the big thrill factory did come back after, I believe it was two years after their initial approval to extend those hours, but that's not included in the request this evening. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions? All right, doesn't look like it. Uh, would anyone like to uh, come forward and make a presentation or add anything? If you could give us your name and address uh, for the record and welcome. Uh, my name is Richard Gray. Uh, I live at 5495 Yellowstone Lane uh, in Plymouth. Um, I am the majority co-owner of the Chanhassen and hopefully soon to be Minnetonka location. Um, with your permission, I would like to just share a little bit about, uh, while we're not in the Minnetonka zip code yet, we have made positive contributions to the Minnetonka community. Um, we had donated 
um, $1,000 to help start the Minnetonka High School Ping Pong Club uh, to purchase uh, tables. We donated a dozen or so paddles and balls to them. Um, I employ a dozen employees at the moment, and two of which are Minnetonka High School students. Um, I hosted one of their classes on entrepreneurship about what it takes to start a business and the complexities of it. Um, additionally, one of those staff members is the uh, president of the newly formed Minnetonka High School Pickleball Club, and we host the students there once a week um, at a half price discount. Um, the students were excited about it. The teachers actually inquired, and so we also host the Minnetonka, Minnetonka High School teachers once a week at a half price discount as well. Great. Yeah, Commissioner Powers, you have a question? I'd just like to ask you a question, sir. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you so much. <clears throat> it says in your written statement that you plan during the warmer months to have lawn host lawn games for your patrons. Mm -hmm. Where would the lawn be? Uh, it's just a term. It would just be out on the back patio. Okay. You know, like bag throwing. All right. Thank you. I have a, actually a follow-up to that. Um, it, the outdoor courts, will those be hard surface pickleball courts, just like the same ones on, on the interior? They would. Okay. Um, any concern? I, I know pickleball's growing quite a bit in popularity, and everyone seems to love it. The only complaints are around the noise sometimes. Uh, any concern about the noise with, uh, with the neighbors? Um, we want to be very respectful. We hope to be um, an asset to the community and not a burden. So we are going to do a little bit more research on the outdoor courts to make sure that we are not a disturbance. Um, so we are planning to delay the build out of those outdoor courts until okay. we know that the residents are satisfied. Great, thanks. Uh, other questions from commissioners? Yeah, Commissioner uh, Maxwell. Yeah, along the lines of those outdoor courts, are you proposing any added fencing or walls to the outdoor area? Or could you describe what you expect that outdoor area to be surrounded by? Um, they took down when Big Thrill uh, left in 2020, they auctioned off and part of the auction was the fencing. So there will be all new fencing that will be going up. Um, if we do the courts, then they would have to be, you know, 12 to 15 feet high just in that section. Um, and of course, for the bar and restaurant, we need to have it fully enclosed. And are you picturing those fencing to be chain link or something that would be more noise impervious? Um, we'd have to do a little bit more research on if we need to do something that would reduce the noise. Um, we don't intend to do chain link. We would like to keep the exterior um, something a little bit nicer looking. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner Banks. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks. Um, thanks for uh, the information. Just it sounds like <clears throat> the outdoor courts may or may not happen. Just kind of depend on future research and analysis. Um, what's the plan B if it does not happen? You know, it's not an essential. It's really. Um, it would be a luxury for our patrons to have it, but it would not impact our business. All right, thank you. Commissioner Henry, you had a question, I think? Mm -hmm. Yep, thanks, Chair. Uh, first of all, maybe it was in the write-up, but what are your planned hours of operation? Uh, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay, and that would be full pickleball playing outdoors in warmer months up until 10 p.m.? No, uh, we don't intend to install any lighting, so sundown 8, 8.30 at the latest. Okay, and you mentioned uh, the, let's see, you mentioned the bar too. Is this, uh, are you planning to have serve alcohol at the place too? Yes. Okay, and in terms of the kitchen, is will you have a full menu? So you're cooking food there, or is it going to be more snack items? Um, so it will be a streamlined menu. Uh, speedy chef most likely otherwise we will be subletting it for a smaller menu for someone to operate okay probably playing by ear and see if there's a demand for it yes good and then the name of the place is uh, pickle and pong but I don't see any ping pong areas are you planning to convert some of the pickleball to having ping pong tables sometimes um, so our Chanhassen location is uh, mega pickle and pong and we have 
14 ping pong tables. Um, that side of the business hasn't really taken off as intended, so we will most likely be doing business as Mega Pickleball. Um, we're going to probably put in a ping pong table or two as families or when people are waiting to rotate in, we'll play. Um, but that is uh, mostly Mega Pickleball will be. Okay. And last, are you lobbying the Minnesota State High School League to incorporate pickleball as a high school sport? <laughs> I've got plenty of high school students trying to do that. Good. Well, we could use your support. Thank you. <laughs> I think Commissioner Henry still has some eligibility. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> Anything uh, I can do. You let any me other know. questions? Commissioner Powers, you had additional no, questions? I was just going to say, if, if ping pong doesn't work, there used to be a, a game called Pong. <laughs> which you could put in, which I'm sure would actually be quite attractive to some people. <laughs> Sitting down after the pickleball. Yeah. A little arcade area would be fun. All right. Any other questions for the applicant? Doesn't look like it. So thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> All right. We will open the public hearing, and if anyone would like to come forward, if anyone bursts through the door, no, it doesn't look like it. We'll close the public hearing. Uh, commissioners, any thoughts or comments? I know you had had some... And not to put you on the spot, but yeah. it's baseball season. Yeah. I can bat you're, lead you're off. You're ready. 330 average. There you go. Um, well, thank you for coming tonight. Um, I've been, I'll say, lucky enough to chat with people who have used the facility that is already open and heard nothing but positive feedback. Um, I hope you're super busy, and um, I think you will be, um, at least for a couple years while this is trendy. Um, we'll see if it gets on ESPN2 or something like that in the future. There you go, see? <laughs> Little research every now and then. Um, I think my biggest concern is um, the, the parking lot, and I think if you have a lot of families hopefully coming to play here, I've seen um, people kind of come flying through to get to Culver's or to get to the other side of the, the building. There's, in my mind, not a ton of um impediment to somebody not going 25 30 miles an hour through what is currently a wide open parking lot and i think by virtue of you hopefully being busy that forces people to slow down but um i would just encourage you to uh, work with the property owner and get clean clear signage so that you don't have any problems and people coming in to complain to you right away that's not that's not the fun part of your job so um i think this is a only a value add to the community and i think the the dink and the doink noise really can't be a pain um to our neighbors hopefully they see the the asset that this is eventually so appreciate your time best of luck great thank you other comments from commissioners pretty controversial one i know but <laughs> <laughs> commissioner henry well, i'm stating the obvious here but people love pickleball and it's a it's a needed place to go for activities in the area, especially on long cold winters like this. We're almost in April and we still need an indoor place to, to recreate. So I'm really glad that you did some research and found that potentially it's gonna be lucrative for you. It's certainly gonna be a benefit to the community. So I'm all in favor of it and uh, looking forward to going playing myself. Commissioner Powers. Yeah, I concur with my other commissioners. I'm really happy that you're bringing in all this ping pong tables and <laughs> What is it, 100, 150 of them are coming? <laughs> um, but in the meantime, the pickleball courts will have to do. So I think, as Commissioner Hansen said, it is value added to the community without a doubt. And my guess is that it is not, this is not a trendy thing, but a long-term idea that will take greater hold over time. So good luck with it. Thanks. Other comments? Anything else? All right, I'll just add a, a couple cents here. Um, I agree. I think one thing Minnetonka doesn't have too much of is entertainment, right? And I think this is a great uh, a great thing to, to have. So the more entertainment I think Minnetonka can bring in that's geared towards whether it's individuals of kind of all ages and families, I think that's fantastic. I'm not too concerned about the outdoor noise because, frankly, I don't think it's going to get used all that much. If it's that nice out, people will probably go to the parks and play for free. I think in the winter is when you're, you're going to really see the value in, in the business. So I'm uh, I'm supportive of that. I think everybody hopefully will see this as a, 
a good asset for the community. The only bit of feedback I heard from a resident was uh, she wished it was a giant Taco Bell instead. So <laughs> you hear interesting <laughs> feedback all the time. So <laughs> maybe you can put that in as plan B if the pickleball thing doesn't work out. But uh, either way, I, uh, I support it as well. So any other final comments or issues? All right. I think we're probably ready then. I think we're all in agreement. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Uh, I'd like to, to make that motion. Okay, I didn't even make it, but I think Commissioner Power. <laughs> I second. We've got the cars running, the meters going. So. All right, uh, the motion would be a recommendation uh, the City Council adopt the resolutions for items concerning Mega Pickle and Pong at 17585 Highway 7. And I believe Commissioner Powers had the motion. Yes, I did. A little premature, but he made it. Paul um, and a second by Commissioner Banks. Is that correct? All right, uh, staff, please pull the commission. Banks. Yes. Hanson. Yes. Henry. Yes. Maxwell. Yes. Powers. Yes. Waterman. Yes. Chair Sewell. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, good luck with your project. And this is tentatively uh, to be heard by the City Council on April 17th. So good luck to you. All right. Uh, moving along to item number nine, adjournment. Would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Motion, Henry. I'll second. Second, Waterman. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. Good night.